on the 16th of April 2012, Michael Adams and Rob Deacon went for a walk around Stanwell Park and the historic sites that related to Lawrence Hargrave. Lawrence had lived in Stanwell Park from 1893 to 1899 with his family. The first part of the tour was of the magnificent family home, Hillcrest, which still stands in Stanwell Park today. Ralph Hargrave uh, inherited most of Stanwell Park and he sold the land off to coal mining companies and was able to build this lovely house, which was not his first home, but his second home here on this property. But this house he called actually One Tree Hill uh, because apparently there was one tree left after the building. And later on it became known as Hillcrest, but only when it became a boarding house. During the Hargraves' time here, if they called it anything, they would have called it One Tree Hill. And the Hargraves were able to come down after Ralph died, and the main reason they came here was because of the economic depression of the 1890s. Hargrave had a big family, he had a limited amount of money, he knew what he wanted to do, so he came here to make sure that his resources were not exhausted before he wanted to do the great work that he did. And what years did they live here? From 1893 to 1899. By 1899, the kids were just getting too bit too uh, old. The two oldest girls had never been to a formal school, so there was a lot of tension in the family. They and he he decided, well, he better go back to Sydney. Well, Michael, um, we're inside Lawrence Hargrove's house, Hillcrest. This is a grand old fireplace. Would that be the original fireplace? We think it is the original fireplace. When it was restored in the 1990s, uh, it was considered by the architects as the original. It's a beautiful old home. And uh, who built this structure? It was built by uh, Lawrence's brother, Ralph. Right. Unfortunately, he didn't live, live long enough to enjoy it because he died in Hong Kong. And... Uh, when he was over there looking for furnishings for it. And they were mysterious circumstances, apparently. It was mysterious circumstances, yes. Uh, he probably, in those days, opium was legal. Uh, and that's a hard drug. And we think that, you know, uh, even though it might have been legal, uh, it's still one of those things that you don't want to get mixed up in. And he's thought to have been murdered. Well, that's very interesting. Let's go for a bit of a wander around the house. We're looking at the uh, family of Lawrence Hargrave and uh, the lady on the left-hand side was, in fact, a maid, Susan Shepherd. And then we have Geoffrey in front of her. He was the baby of the family. And then we have... Um, Mrs. Margaret Hargrave. Uh, we have beside her her daughter Maggie, Margaret. Uh, behind her was Nellie, Helen, the oldest in the family and one who gave a lot of assistance to her father in his work. And then there's Miss Gibson sitting down with Brenda Olive uh, on her knee and she was the governess. And then beside them, on this side, we have Hilda. So um, those, that was the family, and they lived here from 1893 to 1899. It's a beautiful, grand old home, um, and it's been lovingly restored. Yes, um, in this room, they would have, uh, uh, more, more than likely, this was the room where they would gather at night, there would have been a piano here. They all, in those days, all the children would have learned the piano, particularly the girls. But we know from one of uh, Lawrence's letters that uh, he would read stories to them at night while they knitted. And he would only read while he could hear the knitting needles going. As soon as the knitting needles stopped, he stopped reading until they started again. So we can picture that Victorian uh, era of a family uh, who had to make their own entertainment. No television. 
This back entrance led to the kitchen. The kitchen was out the back. Why did they have a kitchen out the back? Because of fire. Everything was made of wood in, in, in most uh, houses, and all cooking was done with wood. No electricity. So out here, if you follow down the steps, Right about here was a big well, and I suspect that this could be something to do with the well, but I don't know. <laughs> but here, right here, was the kitchen, and many times in the old days, the kitchens would burn down, but the rest of the house would be saved. In this particular case, no, the kitchen survived and was just demolished later. We're going to go around to the outside veranda. This was very important in Lawrence Hargrave's work because he built his workshop on the veranda. As we, when we go around, we'll see where it was. This is the, this veranda has been restored. Over the years, the wind boiled down. You get some pretty bad weather here, but the owners of the property lovingly restored the house to its original design, and this was the beautiful old colonial veranda. And look how it looks out over the sea. What a, what a position. Around here, on the northern side of the veranda, This was all closed in by Hargrave, and this part here was his workshop. Now it was in here that those great ideas that he had were born, and then he was able to make the uh, uh, engines and the kites and the wings, mainly in this workshop here, where we're standing. So this is where those box kites were made? for the uh, kite lift experiment. That's right. During the time they built the railway up the hill, uh, some of the workers lived here. And th these basement rooms underneath, where Hargrave would have stored his uh, materials, these were temporary quarters for railway workers. And uh, later on, when it became a guest house, it was probably used for emergency accommodation as well. But it's a bit dark under there. People used to think that there was a basement under the basement, something secret, you know, about the Hargrave family. Because there was uh, evidence of an old set of stairs that went nowhere. Uh, but when they were restoring the house and had a good look, no, no such secrets. And it's not haunted as far as we know. Oh, that's uh, good to hear. <laughs>now, this is living history, isn't it, Michael? There's the cabbage tree palm over there. The Lawrence Hargrave stood next to for the uh, the reenactment photograph the day after the famous box kite experiment, and that photograph was taken on the 13th of November, 1894, and that tree still stands here. In 2012. On November the 13th, 1894, Lawrence Hargrave reenacted the box kite experiment for a photograph. And that photograph was taken next to this tree which still stands in Stanwell Park. Now I'm going to show you the photograph, but this photo people think was actually taken on the day, it was taken the very next day. So this is the famous photograph of Lawrence Hargrave with the box kites, the day after the famous box kite experiment. Michael's holding the book, and if I, sp I pan back, there's the tree. That's living history. It's still alive. It'll probably outlive us all as well. But that's... We're probably standing right at the very point where Lawrence Hargrave was standing the day after with his box kites, after that monumental moment down on the beach. 
So these are the trees. They've been uh, somehow they've survived all the reconstructions and and they stand proudly. And we're standing in the middle where Lawrence would have stood for that photograph. That's the tree over there yeah, that features in the photograph of the mock-up of the kite lift experiment. The mock-up uh, photo was taken the day after the famous kite lift on the beach. That cabbage tree palm was very common in this area in the old days and people used to make hats out of it. So you'd see uh, men walking around with cabbage tree hats very commonly. Now if you pan across Rob, the tree behind the closest tree to us is the other tree in the photograph. So if you think of the space between those trees, that's where he had his box kites all assembled and ready for the mock-up photograph. This is the first house, well actually the second house ever built in Stanwell Park. First on this property, built by Ralph Hargrave in 1883. Of course, Michael, the reason we know that this is the original location of the Ralph Hargrave home is because of these two very large bunion nut pine trees behind me, which were mere saplings in the original photographs that you can see of the Ralph Hargrave house. So behind me, two bunion nut pines, which indicate here is the very location of that original house that Ralph Hargrave built in Stanwell Park. So uh, between the well and the trees, yes, that's the original house. And it was facing out to sea again, as you would expect. Uh, Rob, well this is uh, the well that was uh, used to supply water for the original house built on this property by Ralph Hargrave in 1883. So that's, all of this work goes back to that time. There's a groove in the well that you can see and there was a pipe that went down the hill to Hargrave Creek. But halfway down the hill there was an engine and it's still there in the lantana and jungle down there. Very hard to get to. And this pipe ran all the way down into the creek which always had water in it. Hargrave Creek always had water in it so they could pump water up here and keep a supply. I'm sure this well also was used to further pump over to the uh, Hillcrest house when they moved there because I, I do believe Nellie mentioned that in one of her letters. There's one little building here Rob that was very important. This is where the uh, kites that Hargrave sent to America were packed and sent from. Later on, the building became a dance hall. But at the time, uh, the people who lived here, who were called the Swains, thought that this was a plane that he was packing up and sending to America, an aeroplane. It was really his box kites, and they were entered into a competition there, which they won, and he won some money for it. But... Um, uh, later, later on, somebody in America took out a patent on his box kites, and so he never saw any more money for those. Michael, what are we doing here on the, uh, the circle in Stanwell Park? Well, this is the site of the first house that was ever built in Stanwell Park. It was built by Major Sir Thomas Mitchell, the Surveyor General and famous explorer. Uh, of uh, many expeditions into Australia. And see the man they, they named the Major Mitchell Cockatoo after? It's, that's the, the very man in himself. So we get a constant reminder of him every time we see one of those birds. And of course, something else Rob. What? In Stanwell Park, Mount Mitchell. Ah, Mount Mitchell. Named after him as well. It's my favourite mountain in Stanwell Park. I often the, climb that one. When he died, his son Campbell inherited it and he uh, continued to develop the house and it was finished in about 1860 and uh, for a long time it was he lived there after he died and uh, oh, also Judge Hargrave, Lawrence Hargrave's father, he also spent a lot of time there as well So this is where Judge Hargrave came, he stayed and originally got to know Stanwell Park yes. 
by coming and yes. staying at the Major Mitchell House. He would lease it. He loved the fishing down here. So that was the start of the connection for the Hargrave family exactly. in Samuel Park exactly. through this house. Through this house. On this very spot. Yes. So later on, it became a boarding house, which and then when the uh, Stanwell Avenue was constructed, because of Stanwell Avenue virtually came into the back part of the house where we're standing, they moved the house down to Station Street. And the timbers from that house are in number 23 Station Street. But um, that was the very first house here. 